You're listening to the Three Feet Radio Show with Ben Carbonaro and Luke Herbert. From our studios come special guests and netball commentary, exclusively on YouTube. Good evening, listeners, and welcome again to another edition of the Three Feet Radio Show. It's not long to go for the Commonwealth Games now, and um, I'm pretty excited with our special guest tonight. I'm sure you are too, Luke. Oh, I'm very excited, and, you know, one of these guests that I like to have on the show, who may not be as well known as netballers from countries like Australia and New Zealand, but it's still exciting to interview them, isn't it, Ben? Yeah, it most certainly is, and joining us um, tonight, well, our time anyway, is um, Scottish Thistle, but actually Australian-born, in Fiona Thiemann. Hi, Fiona, how are you today? Hi, how's it going? I'm well, thank you. Good to hear, no doubt very excited, looking ahead to Glasgow, first of all. Um, yes, it is getting very exciting over here. You can just feel the buzz around. Just everyday people are getting really excited, and Glasgow itself is, you know, preparing for the, their biggest event in a long time. And can you just tell us how you came to be playing for Scotland? Um, well, my um, my dad is actually from Scotland, um, so. Being um, having a British passport, I'm eligible to play. So I think it was last year or earlier last year, I was um, in contact with the Scotland um, board um, and the coach, Gail Parada, was um, emailing me back and forth and, and it started from that. So um, I think Stacey West was over at the time for the World Cup uh, or the um, youth games, um, netball games, so she was able to um, talk to the coach and, yeah, it just went from there. There's another Aussie in the team as well, so um, they they did know what, you know, the standard of netball was like as we've both played in the Australian Netball League together. Yeah, and that's Rachel Forbes who comes from Queensland, uh, Fiona. Did you two know mm-hmm. each other at all before playing for Scotland? Um, I didn't actually know her personally, but um, obviously when you're playing in the same league, you know, um, and you're analysing other teams their names do come up, how are you going to beat them and, and things like that. So I did know her through that. She's a few years older than me, um, so not personally, but, yeah, she's a great player. And just switching views here, you recently played a test series against South Africa to prepare for the Glasgow Commonwealth Games, um, and despite the fact that it was a 3-0 series loss, what did the team take out of that? Uh, yeah, our tour to South Africa was um, really what well, we did take a lot out of it. We we put in some good performances despite being disappointed um, with our first game, um, but we were quite happy with our second and third and how we came back and we challenged and we contested the game really well to get a final result with 13 or just 13 goals in it. So I guess it shows that we can compete against teams that are higher ranked. They're currently sixth in the world and we were 12th in the world when we actually played them. So to go into um into that tour and, and just coming off the qualifying for the World Cup was really good for us and I think our, our belief as a team has really lifted from that and it's fantastic preparation for us in the lead up to the Com Games. You talk about rankings, I believe the Thistles are now ranked eleventh in the world Fiona, but what are the ga- what are the um um goals and aims heading into the Commonwealth Games and probably more uh more, more long term heading into um Sydney twenty fifteen next year, the World Cup? Yeah, we are ranked 11 at the moment, which is fantastic. We're moving up the ranks. Um, I think two years ago, the Scottish Thistles were ranked 15th. So there, there's been a lot of movement and a lot of climbing in the last two years and, and a lot of change has gone, in, gone on within the Scottish Thistles. So um, obviously we're realistic in what we want to achieve and, and with the Com Games, we're, you know, gunning for a top eight finish. So um, it's the first Com Games that the Scottish um, netball team has ever been a part of so that's just exciting in itself but obviously we want to go out there we know what we we think we can achieve and, and that's what we'll be going for looking into next year for the um, World Cup in Sydney um, that probably hasn't been talked about as much our focus at the moment is just on um, the Com Games. And just speaking of the rankings, because really people in Australia and New Zealand don't really necessarily pay that much attention to the rankings beyond, say, the top five nations, can you just briefly tell the listener why then the rankings, say, outside of the top five are so important? Well, I guess when you look at the rankings and, and as a team like Scotland, we know that, you know, you've got your top four, maybe top five, and that they're 
fighting for those positions amongst themselves. But anything out of um, top five, you're pretty much um, you're six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They're all gunning for those positions. They're the smaller nations. They're it's not where netball is generally the, the culture. I guess when I was speaking, speaking to someone yesterday, actually, and they were asking how the netball is actually different to back home to here and. I said, well, netball's a culture back home. So here, um, that's something that us as the Scottish Thistles are really trying to, um, it's another goal of ours is to make sure that um, we have legacy after these com games and that um, netball becomes the, the most popular sport for females um, in Scotland. So having that, that's going to help with the rankings in the future, just having more participation of girls in the sport. But like I said, there's um, you've got... Teams like Malawi, who are who are um, really close up there, and, and Trinidad and Tobago, Wales, Northern Ireland, which are close rivals to Scotland. Um, there's Saint Lucia, who are also in the games um, in our pool as well. So there's a lot of teams, and there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of close games in the Commonwealth Games coming up. And you talk about making it the most popular um, um, sport for females in Scotland, Fiona. I watched the recent documentary, Game Net Match, and your chief executive, um, Maggie, is very passionate about trying to drive even greater participation um, in schools, but at the same time, too, getting back to where netball was back in the probably the um, the early to mid-80s, where Scotland in some, in some ways were a, a European superpower in netball. Yeah, Maggie's fantastic, actually, with her um, drive and determination behind it. That our sport and, and netball in Scotland. So um, it's all about promoting it and getting the buzz around netball. And um, I think ha- helping people it, playing in primary school, but also playing when they leave school as well. It's seen over here as a bit of a schoolgirl sport. You play in, in school and, and then there's not so much set up as it is like in Australia and New Zealand, where I know that everyone can just play night netball or mixed netball or footy netball and, and it's like that. So I think getting that buzz back and, and a lot of people that have come and see the, seen the games um, over here get get a real surprise when they actually say, whoa, okay, that's not netball that I saw in, in primary school or, or I played in high school. Um, it's a lot faster. It's a lot physical. A lot of like cousins of mine that have never seen it have come to the game and said, oh, hang on a second, I thought netball was a non-contact sport. So people are realising that netball is a fantastic game to watch. It's a great spectator sport and, and it's a sport that anyone can be involved in. And now I just want to switch gears here a little bit because by by your daytime trade or daytime job, if you like, you are a school teacher. So how do you manage the demands associated with being a school teacher and being an elite level netballer? Um, well, I haven't been teaching full time over here um, in Scotland. Um, I've been working part time, but obviously being back home and still having the demands of, you know, your strength and conditioning and, and your court work and your fitness and everything like that. Um, I guess that's something that is just part and parcel of what comes along with being um, a netballer. Um, obviously, until you make it into um, to the top the top stage, um, every, if you watch Game Net and Match, the documentary that Ben spoke about, everyone in our team is either a full-time student or a full-time um worker so it's it's you're up you've got gym at 6 30 in the morning then the girls are off to work for the full day and then we see each other again for either um, a court session or fitness so um we're most days we're training two days a week which is i guess just like full-time athletes but with full-time work so it is a big commitment but you do it because you love the game um you love being a part of the a, a part of a team um, and obviously, we're all driven by competing in the Con Games and moving Scotland up in the ranks. And yeah, I, I certainly did watch Game Net and Match Fiona, and I absolutely loved it. It's a credit to everyone involved in the, in the doco. It was great. And one thing I found really interesting was you were talking about like you're having to work full time, but then also on top of your net on top of your netball commitments. It just shows also I think the passion for 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 the sport in Scotland. You had your P, um your PR girl there. She ended up doing it um voluntarily for quite some time, despite Netball Scotland pulling the funding. Yeah, sorry, sorry uh, Scotland. Yeah, yeah, no, um. Obviously, it is it is a hard um, task, I guess, when netball isn't a sport that's going to be slammed on the back page of your newspaper and things like that. It's not a sport that's in your face all the time. With the games and with our success, um, obviously with the documentary and and we've had a um, we're qualified for the World Cup and with the Con Games in Glasgow, 
Um, Netball Scotland has been in the media a lot more over here. Um, a lot of the girls aren't really used to it, but they're not, they're not, they can say that they're really enjoying the experience. So we're all, like we said, is just trying to get the, the word out there, trying to get people interested, get them to a game, um, and hopefully hook them in that way and really get them excited about this sport. But yeah, it is, um, it is on the rise over here. Obviously, there's, it's a big step off what's happened in Australia and New Zealand. Um, in, in England with their um, Super League. So um, there is a long way to go, but they're, they're taking the right steps in the right direction. Well, Ben and I wish you and Netball Scotland well in promoting the sport, and uh, I think it's in everyone's best interest that the, the game develops in Scotland. It's simply put that, you know, it would be nice if international netball became more competitive, and I don't just mean amongst the top sort of five nations, even if, like you've mentioned, even if you go to, say, the top 10 or 12 nations, I, I think it's also very good if the... I hope you don't mind me calling them second tier nations, but mm-hmm. if they are more competitive and if, you know, the more the sport develops in those countries, it can only be a positive thing in my mind. What do you reckon, Ben? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely agree, agree with that. And, um, you mentioned that your coach before Fiona, um, Gail Parata, um, how have you found, how have you found working with her? Because, um, for quite a number of years, um, you, you may have sort of touted as a possible contender to get the Silver Ferns job for New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, no, Gail has been fantastic for the team, obviously bringing in a different style to what the girls are used to, um, bringing in across the New Zealand style. She's been um, coached a lot of really top-tier teams, um, and she has a a Scottish connection in her um, husband's father was from Scotland, so she always said if she was going to coach anyone other than New Zealand, um, she would have loved it to be in Scotland. So she's really happy to be over here. She's really changed the culture amongst amongst the girls in the way that we're, um, we're treated. We are a professional team. We are an elite team. We're a national team. So um, she's brought a, real, a lot of great things. Obviously, she's got an insight to, to the how um, New Zealand play and the, their style of netball, and I think that she's really, really brought a lot to the Scottish Thistles and you might even see some of that during the Com games in the way that we may have changed our style and, and some of the defensive structures and attacking structures were put in. And can you just tell us a little bit sort of about the changes in team culture that she's helping about? Um, I think that she has brought the winning mentality. Um, obviously, the belief and, and helped us and helped the girls get, get, get that back within the team. Obviously, I think two years ago, the Scottish Thistles hadn't won a game for 18 months. If you watch the documentary and, um, there was another coach that came in and then Gail's been in for the last year. Um, and she doesn't take anything less. If it's not a good performance, she'll let you know it's not a good performance. And, um, she, her standards are high and that's what we need and we need to keep pushing. Um, because I guess sometimes if you're outside the 10 um, top teams in the world, you can kind of settle for that and you put other teams on pedestals. But um, really, if you're just as determined and, and really you have your game plans, you have your structures, you have your processes, anyone can be beaten on the day. So I think Gail's really brought that through. Her intensity at training, what she expects of us as we are elite athletes, um, has really helped us as well. So, no, I'm really happy to be... Um, working underneath Gail. And just another thing I saw coming out of the documentary as well, Fiona, was the fact that Gail has brought on a lot of like the um, uh, post-game analysis and a lot more of that technical stuff that may not have been may not have been there within um, Scottish netball previously too. Yeah, obviously we've got um, you know video analysis and um, pre-match um, analysis, and then we've got personal goals, individual goals, we've got st- um, stat things that we can help. Um, gauge our performance and, and really meet, meet targets and set targets and it's all about um, having targets and, and making sure we can gauge our performance. Okay, where did we go wrong? Where can we break it down? Not, okay, we've just lost you know lost the plot in the third quarter. What actually went wrong? Because um, the con games are unforgiving. If you lose a match, one match, that might mean that you don't make the, the top four um, to cross over to play off the you know, if you're playing off the fifth or sixth or seventh or eighth. So um, every game is a do-or-die game in the Pong games, and, and that's what we've been building for. 
Just before we look at wrapping up the show, can you tell us the importance of the personal goals that the players will have, particularly when you play against some of the, the higher ranked sides? Um, individual goals is obviously you need to do your own job first, and especially if you're playing against some of the, the higher um, <clears throat> caliber players. Um, as a team, we obviously are realistic in, in what we want to achieve, but we want to be competitive and we want to um, challenge those top teams and whether it be reducing the, the score margin or um, really, you know, taking taking a quarter or, or things like that. So in the likes of New Zealand stuff, we'll, we'll be going on to that um, with our full team and really challenging and putting out and seeing what Scotland has to offer. And just one last one too from me, Fiona. You've come a long way since the Melbourne Phoenix uh, and Australian schoolgirls days. That was when I first got to know you all those <laughs> moons ago. It's it's almost ten years ago now. Oh my gosh, you make me sound old. <laughs> um, no, it has been a long time. I think that um, the Victorian netball pathway is absolutely brilliant, um, bringing girls in um, from a young age or scouting girls, um, and I think that that's really helped me with the netball, the exposure to coaches that I've had um, throughout those years and, and you know, the the friendships I've made um, along the way as well. But obviously just seeing the, the VNL um, Victorian Netball League change and, and that's really improved um, since what it was before. So it's exciting. Um, netball in, in Victoria is um, fantastic. So I think it's leading the way for the other states in Australia. All right. Thanks very much for having a chat with us uh, today, Fiona. It's given us a good insight into what it's like with netball in Scotland and um, good luck for Glasgow. Thank you very much. Lovely to talk to you both. You've been listening to the Three Feet Radio Show with Ben Carbonaro and Luke Herbert. Tune in next time for more special guests and netball commentary exclusively on YouTube.